Hello, everyone. I'm Thais. Hi. Um, I'm Thais Morat, and this presentation was done with James Hillman from the Wiki Project Medicine. So, as you can see, I work for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention um, in the Department of Health and Human Services, which, if you're not from the US, is comparable to a Ministry of Health. So most of my career has been in conducting research on occupational safety and health. And as I grew frustrated with the length of time for the, for the research findings to be part of uh, real life, I started being more interested in expanding science communication. And so we do blogs and other things. And then that's how I started uh, looking into Wikipedia. My first editathon was with James. And it was very, it was very, um, very enticing, and I became uh, involved with that. So I'm going to describe a bunch of different things that we do, and our focus translation for health promotion. So I have to acknowledge this is, this is, was a build up from many, many years of work with um, colleagues at NIOSH and outside NIOSH. We got a small funding this past year from the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. I have some colleagues here um, attending who are experts in, in a subject matter related to health. And we also have a Wikipedian in residence that John Sadowski is here attending and other groups representing uh, minorities in the US. I also partner with university professors to incorporate uh, Wikipedia assignments in the classroom. And some of the work on translation happened through these efforts. So why are we doing this? It's, it's not, um, I'm not the only one at my institute do, doing Wikipedia things. My, this is the photo of our director explaining that one way that, um, one challenge that health agencies have is to reach the intended audience. And more and more, this is a challenge. People don't want information to be pushed. They want to go and find it. So we learn also because of our digital metrics that a lot of people are coming to the CDC, are coming to the World Health Organization sites because they are in Wikipedia and there is a link to our site. So that's how they, they get there. So this was, I think, in 2015 or so that he said, you know, we want to make sure that our content that's in Wikipedia is accurate, it's complete and up to date. And so there was this strategy. Um, it, it started initially with Wikipedians in residence. We have another one here. Hi, James. Um, who initially, they did the edits themselves, but then the, their role expanded. They start training staff like me. Um, they started doing small events, bigger events, and since we have many partnerships with, with uh, universities, we start also doing the, the partnerships for teaching with Wikipedia. And this story is described in a series of our science blogs that I mentioned in this slide. So as I was saying, I think I'm not quite sure when it started having um, Wikipedians in residence, but as I said, they directly improve. They created a Wikipedia project um, for occupational safety and health. They contribute to strategic planning, you know, because there's so much to be done. You have to think of all ways to, to do that. Um, also, they connect Wikipedians in general with our resources. And the project, uh, Wiki, uh, project for occupational safety and health is right now undergoing some expansion. So there, there it is. As other, we kind of follow the model of the Wiki Medicine project. They are so good. They have so many nice features. And um, this is the table that summarizes the articles that have been tagged as being occupational safety and health. I'm sure it's an undercount um, by quality and by um, importance by the community. So I, we, how did we get to translations? Because we realized that we need um, health information to be translated and adapted to different languages because we have large uh, subgroups that do not have English as a first, first language. And usually these groups are, um, you know, have many, many challenges. There are a series um, of aspects that makes them underprivileged 
and um, to address them, to provide them with good information has to be in their language. Unfortunately, minorities, immigrants and low wage workers are overrepresented in jobs with the highest injury rates and illnesses rates. That includes mortality. <clears throat> so you see that these um, underprivileged workers, there are a much higher risk for, any, for a series of conditions when you compare to, to other ones. So they are considered a vulnerable, underserved po population occupational health. They have different, sometimes it's not only the language, of course. Um, it can be gender, can be a disability, um, can be because of their, their legal status in, in the US. So there are many, um, many groups with uh, compounding vulnerabilities who have uh, poor access to information on health in, in their language. And that's a bar barrier for making decision or even access available hearing, uh, sorry, health care. So um, I mentioned that I, um, James Hailman was one of the first people I interacted with Wikipedia and he is with the Wiki Project Med Medicine and they also identified this as a need for um, having Wikipedia content to expand on health content in other languages. And you know, why this is needed? I, I mentioned the, how vulnerable they are because of their work situation, but it's much bigger than that. And they have um, data that every day thousands die for lack of health care. And a major factor is ac um, information that is understandable in their own language. So we started different uh, collaborations in, in different ways. The Wiki Project Medicine started in 2011, and initially they had a partnership with Translators Without Borders, and they were very successful in translating. <laughs> One of the classic examples that they did, for instance, during the Ebola crisis, Many agencies like the CDC, the World Health Organization, developed a one-page summary, you know, recommendations to avoid the transmission and care of Ebola patients. But because of this partnership with Translators Without Borders, they made um, this basic information on Ebola available in 115 African languages. We cannot compete with that. It's a really amazing reach and, and very important, life-saving. Um, and then, so they started um, with the translation of ex art articles that existed in English and developed their strategy. So they relaunched a website, they improved on the content translation tools that Wikimedia uh, developed. So it's a little bit easier. And they also have a dashboard to guide translators to track progress and to collect data on impact. So this is a recent one and you can see the number of translations is increasing. This is a, um, a screenshot of the leaderboard, the, sorry, the leaderboard that lets you see a campaign. There are several topics. Um, you, can, you can pick a language and which year you are interested in seeing that translation. So that's um, um, through our interaction, we created a campaign for occupational health. There are four or five women's health. I don't remember what the other ones are, a hearing. I am a hearing researcher. So you go there, you register and you choose a campaign and you identify a language that you are to translate to and identify which articles that they evaluated that are in a good enough uh, quality in English to be translated. So and it's not all articles in Wikipedia, just those that are considered of good quality. So another thing that we have done are campaigns for observant days, obser observance days. Um, I'm a hearing researcher, so we started with Wiki for World Hearing Day in 2019. We expanded for a year of sound in 2020. That was crazy, uh, too big, a year is too much. Then we repeated work hearing day in 23 and 24, where basically anyone can participate and improve content related to hearing, sound, hearing care, and, and things like that. It was really well received. We were able to attract lots of, um, lots of professional associations, universities, the World Health Organization, the CDC. So everybody loved it. It's, uh, it's a very nice initiative. Of course, we, 
but of all activities, I said, we, we try different things. We go to conferences, we do small in-house uh, um, meetups and things like that. But my favorite for sure is to working with students. In the US and Canada, we can uh, partner with the Wiki Education. They had, had many sessions here, really, really good. And with abroad, you can use similar tools using the, the program and, and um, events dashboard. So it's beautiful. They have, um, you know, they track everything, the students, all the edits, the number of views, the students love it. Um, instructors usually like it too. And um, in this case, we, um, of course, the students have the freedom to decide on which topics, not of course, but we, we decide to give the students the freedom of choosing a topic, but we try to guide to some of the, uh, our priorities. In this case, it was very easy because it was a class on equity in occupational health. So here are some of the examples of articles that they were added in that class. One of them is Roofer. Roofer was a so-and-so article in English, but we know that the number one cause of fatality of construction workers in the US are people, are workers, mostly Hispanic, falling from roofs and die or have very severe injuries. So that was a very, very top priority. And so we first translated the article into English, no, sorry, into Spanish after improving it. And, um, and also more generic topics like social determinants of health and health, the, pay, the article on health equity itself. And here are the examples of, uh, you know, um, what the students did. We also had a little bit of funding because some of the students, most of the students like it. A couple of students, every class, love it. And so we were able to have, come up with a little bit of funding for those students that really excelled, that really did a good job, to continue the work after the class was done, a small award, of, a financial award for, uh, for them to finish up the work. So just last week, we got published a paper bringing all together, because we do all those things I, I mentioned to you. We do small events, big events. Um, we do the campaigns, and we do classroom uh, activities. So uh, to be very honest, my idea with this paper was to publish in a fancy journal like the BMC Public Health to give credibility to attract other researchers like me to realize the potential, the availability of data, how it's, it's a great mechanism to improve science communication. So in this study, we look at all the different things we were doing on the year 2023. We did this, the um, online campaign, Wiki for World Hearing Day 23, and we compared the contributions of students, of spontaneous volunteers, people, Wikipedians who find it out and, and participate, and also these small workshops that we did. And small, nowadays, I like small workshops better than I like big ones, because the small you really can, people really get into and you can get things done. So we compare those, and of course, it's not too surprising that the students who had a, a quarter or a semester to work on it did most of the heavy lifting. These were universities in Brazil that got a big grant for that. So they did the most extensive edits. Doesn't mean they got the most views. Of course, they were editing mostly in Portuguese and French because we were, there was a Brazilian grant and we also a professor from the University of Montreal. And it's hard to compete in views with the English Wikipedia. They are the ones that get the most view, views. But it's still, even small edits count, even if um, um, the number of views is not so high at all, it all helps. So, and th these things, doing a campaign, kind of um, coordinated with the classroom programs is mutually beneficial. The students love it to the bigger context. So they feel extra motivated to do, uh, to improve Wikipedia articles and, and participate because they are, they feel like they are contributing to a global campaign. And people in the global campaign are very excited to have the students being able to work on a topic for a longer period of time. So this was um, just published last week, comparing these uh, educational programs with volunteer-based campaigns. Again, you see how many articles were added and how many people views and, and so forth. 
So also, again, to try to get scientists to incorporate Wikipedia activities, we try to publish at scientific journals. We publish one describing one of our early experiences with, uh, with um, adding subject matter expertise in, with Wikipedia assignments. We also described of, um, a framework for health agencies to incorporate, like we do at the CDC, um, Wikipedia activities. And we also go to um, conferences presenting and try to publish also in the trade journals for the community. And we also try to raise awareness of all this through our science blogs, outside blogs, and, and so forth. So I think, um, so far, I think our strategy is going really well. And I think the way why it's going so well is because we have all these different components that complement each other. We articulate with other groups outside. The partnerships are super important for this. We try to connect with local affiliates if we are working outside the US or with a, or a, a project like we do with uh, Wiki Project Medicine. Of course, the dashboards are fantastic and uh, that helps everybody love metrics. So um, that's a big um, attraction. And you know, sometimes it, and there are many f sources of funding, small, big, this is worth checking, trying to find those. I think it's important for, to attract subject matter experts to have the academic documentation to public in the traditional media, because they depend on that for their careers, to get promotions, to get grants and things like that. So we cannot not do that. Um, and also to disseminate in, in, in various environments. Um, one thing, let's just say about the teaching um, approach, I like to, to bring up to profess, because I, I kind of, I'm insert myself in between WikiEDU and the university professors. I am only an adjunct, I don't have a formal um, association with a university, I cannot even because I work for the CDC. So, um, but I, since I am experienced with Wikipedia, I kind of help, I hold the professor's hand that they will be okay. They don't have to become Wikipedia experts to have an assignment. And that, so I ease them in and now many of them, they do it by themselves because they, they have done so several times and are comfortable with, with it. So I, I cannot, um, I encourage for those that are trying to expand their activities to look into all these different ways to do it. And thank you, and I think we have some time for questions. Awesome, awesome work. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, I was wondering if you could talk just a little bit more about the students, um, what level at university, uh, the course context, you know, those types of things, like how the editing fit into their course of study. Yeah, most of the groups that I have worked with are graduate students. Sometimes, sometimes in medical school, there are physicians and things like that. So it's, I have to say, it's often much easier with uh, graduate students because they have been writing. They are, they want to publish in papers. So with them is easy breeze. Uh, undergrad is a bit harder because they, they haven't written so much. So, um, but I work in different, and I also did some work in Brazil um, there is mostly undergrad, but also another thing that happened in Brazil, in Brazil you're supposed to have like independent study, even for undergrad, you have to do an extension activity. And this extension activity, even they are required to take, they have a many to choose from, and this, they don't receive a grade. But we found that uh, Wikipedia, the issue of addressing misinformation, the issue of publishing immediately, is enough motivation, even without the grade, you, we have had student volunteers, so, yeah. Does anybody else have a question here? 
ask on that one. Hey, um, so, I mean, uh, my question is about, like, um, is, is there any translation needed for, like, um, other source materials, like references and stuff in the articles, like, um, you know, studies that might only be in PDF format might be harder to translate? Um, so, yeah, I mean, just any considerations for that? No, I think that would be an extra layer, different work. We usually, when you do the translation, what you get mostly are English papers, and often, often in the health literature, the Wikipedia privileges the one open access. But we try, when we're editing in, in other languages than English, to bring some references in that language to add on to, to the Has to the reference else have a list. question here? Hi, when you're doing the translations, uh, how are you referencing? Are you using the same references from the English on the translations, or are you also finding uh, references uh, in those languages? We try. We, we mostly, we get the, the ones from the English version. That comes automatically. Um, then we try to, to identify good sources in the language that we're editing to, to bring. And people actually, People like to do that. That's an easy thing to ask students because they want to, the research in their language to be uh, included. So it's a, an easy thing to ask. Um, I mean, you usually get people interested in doing that. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Oh, no, no questions. He's got a question. <laughs> we don't have a question. <laughs> And I do, uh, if those, um, James Heyman is very approachable, and um, of all things I've done, and we usually don't, we try to get, particularly in languages that are underdeveloped, it's easier to create new articles than to translate. Translating is probably, among all things you can do with Wikipedia is the, one of the less fun because, you know, go in blocks and they wanted to edit every block. So, um, but the MED wiki translation tool makes the process a little bit friendlier. But so if you're interested in translation, learning more about the tool and how to, to use it, I would contact James, he's super helpful. Well, I guess we have time for, for the next speaker to get ready here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.